up until now, we've looked at how to add and subtract fractions, and we grouped them together because the strategy to solving those kind of questions was very similar. Do you remember what the strategy was? Think back. Right. We had to learn how to find common denominators. The denominators had to be the same number. We had to multiply by something, sometimes divide, to turn them into the same number. Great. Now we're going to move on to multiplying and dividing fractions. They too have a very similar strategy to each other, but one that is different than adding and subtracting. In fact, it is easier. Okay, that's why we're leaving it to the end. However, people still forget about how to do this. And the first thing they try to do when they see a question like this is to try to find common denominators. Okay, because they're so used to adding and subtracting and because teachers spend a lot of time on, on rehearsing that sort of skill that it becomes ingrained. But I'm going to shift you away from this because over here we don't care about common denominators. That's the least of our worries. If they're the same, great. But all we have to do here is we have to multiply the numerators, just times those together, you get 6. I'm going to show you how simple this is. Then you multiply the denominators and you get 20. Then you reduce your answer by dividing. Now what divides into 6 and 20? 2, good. 2 goes into both. And that will break down into 3 over 10. And that's in lowest terms, which means we're done. Yeah, that's it. I promise you, that's all you have to do. Now, question two is a little bit more advanced. But look, we have mixed fractions. We're going to introduce them right now. But what did Mr. Melham say if you had a mixed fraction? First thing you have to do, before you even worry about the question, what it says. Right, you have to turn them into what? Yes, improper fractions. So you have to go 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 50 in. And the denominator stays 4. And then this one becomes 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7. And over 3. And then we just multiply. 15 times 7. Oh, no, that's a big... Okay, look, all, if, you don't, if you're not sure, if you can't count by 15s, just do it on the side of the page. I go 15 multiplied by 7. Oh, Mr. Melm, can't we just use a calculator? No, I don't believe in calculators. Just move on, do it on paper. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 1 plus 3 is 10. And you get 105. So we're going to get 105 for our numerator, and we're going to get 12 for our denominator. We just times them and times those. We're done. Oh, not quite. We have to reduce. Well, what goes into 105 and 12? Well, 3 goes into 12, right? Does 3 go into 105? Yes, it does. How did I know so fast? Because the rule that you learned last year, and go back to those lessons if you're not, if you don't remember them, you add up the digits. 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 6. And since 6 is divisible by 3, then so is 105. So we're going to divide by 3, and we're going to divide by 3. How many times does 105 divided by 3? Oh, no, Mr. Malham, are you going to make me do long division now because you don't believe in calculators? Oh, you bet I am. I'm going to do exactly that. So we're going to go 105. We're going to divide by 3. So we're going to put 3 goes into 10 is 3 times. That makes 9. 1. Bring down the 5. 3 goes into 15 5 times. Aha, we got 35. So that's going to be 35, and the denominator will be 4. Now just turn it into a mixed fraction again, so it looks like these. Let's see, 4 goes into 35. Well, 4 times 9 is 36. That's too much, so it must be 8. 4 times 8, yeah, that's 32. So 33, 34, 35, that's 3 left over, over 4. And we've got our hand. That's it. We're done. We've got it. A little bit more steps, a few more steps because we've got mixed fractions, but we're done. Okay, now we're going to move on to number 3. And 3 looks exactly like number 2, so we're just going to skip it. Now we're going to do a little bit more advanced... Scene 1, Apple, take 1. ...type of question. We have 3 fourths multiplied by a mystery number equals that. Now, Mr. Melham said, yep, yeah, don't worry about the question, just not yet. Just change this to an improper fraction. And Mr. Melham is right. We have 12 times 2 plus 3 is going to be what? 24, 27. So we're going to get 27 over... 12. We're going to have a mystery fraction. So we have this here, mystery number, mystery number, and we have 3 over 4 here. And we have times. So what's that fraction going to be? Think logically. 3 times something equals 27. Yes, 3 times 9. 4 times something makes 12. Yep, 9 over 3. Let's move on to this one. Scene 1, Apple, take 2. Okay, so we've got, um, what do we have here? We have a mystery fraction. 
So we're going to make our mystery line. We have a multiplication symbol. We have a oh, mixed fraction. We're going to transform it into 12, 13, 14, 15. If you have no idea what I just did, go back to my mixed fraction lessons to see how to convert them. Or just pay attention to what I did in the last question. And here we have 24 plus 6 is 30. 30 over 12. And now we have to find that mystery number. Not too hard because 2 multiplied by 15 makes 30. And 3 multiplied by 4 makes 12. How about these two? Oh, we've got uh, something missing here. We got to put it in. It's dividing fractions. Yes, we got to put the division symbol in. How do we divide fractions? Mr. Melham said it's similar to multiplying them. Yes, it is. Here's the first thing you need to understand. That these numbers, this was the original question. So we have 2 over 5 divided by 1 over 4. What do we do? Look, you take the reciprocal, that's a new word, the reciprocal, the reciprocal is when you flip the fraction around. You take the reciprocal of this one, say flip it, just the second one. Don't touch the first one. Just leave the first one alone. Reciprocal the second one. And take this one, get it out of there, and turn it into multiplication. What? We can do that? Yes, we can do that. You reciprocal and you multiply. You have to do both. Don't just multiply and forget the reciprocal. You get the wrong answer. Now, after we do that, we just do it like normal. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 1 is 5. And we get 8 over 5. Hey, let's turn it to a mixed fraction. We get 1 whole and 3 over 8. Nope. No, not 3 over 8. We got 3 over 5. Let's double check. 5 times 1 plus 3 is 8 over 5. Great. Moving on to question 2. Ooh, we got the mixed fractions. Okay, no problem. We'll just convert them into impropers. We got 4 times 3 is 12 and 3 is 15. So we have 15 over 4. Look at this 5 I've made. Over. Oh my God, that's messy. Let's do it again. 15 over 4. We're going to Take this and change the sign. Yes, we're going to slash it out and put an X. And then we're going to take this, 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 over 5. 10. But what did I do wrong? I forgot to do something. Can anybody find out what I did wrong? Yes, right. I didn't flip this one here. I have to flip it. So I'm going to take these numbers. I'm going to write 5 over 12 instead. Let's do 5 over 12. That's what I mean. If you don't flip that second one, you're going to get the wrong answer. It won't even be close. Now, 15 times 5 is what? Let's count. 15, 30. You know how to count by 15s? Count with me. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. That's five times. Bottom's going to be 48. Ay, ay, ay. What's going to go into 45, 48 and 75? Three goes into both. Mr. Malm, how'd you find that out so fast? Look, here's how, here's how I know this. Because I know three 25s makes a 75. I'm, I'm good with coins, you know, 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents, right? So three times 25. So I can divide this by three. But how do I know so fast that three goes into 48? Well, simple. Four plus eight is 12. And 12 goes into, uh, three goes into 12. So that means 48 also does. How many times? 16. How did you know that, Mr. Mom, so fat? I'm just, yeah, it's just, you know, with practice. You'll get better with practice as well. Some of you already know that very fast. We're going to divide these two. We're going to get 25. Divide the bottom. You're going to get, what did I say? 16, right? And I believe that's in lowest terms. Nothing will divide into both of them at the same time. Now let's just turn it back into a mixed fraction. And we're going to get one whole time and nine left over. Because one whole makes 16, and then 9 left over, and then 16 on the denominator. We're, we're, we've got this, baby. We've got this. One whole and 9 sixteenths. That's the one, by the way, not a scribble. The last page here. These are the hardest questions. If you can do these, guys, you're just awesome. You're awesome if you can't do it as well, but you're more awesome if you can. We have 2 over 5 divided by a mystery number, and that's going to be 8 over, fi eight over 15. Look, I'm going to use some logic here, and I hope I don't throw you off. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. We know that if there's division, we to get this answer here, to get this answer, this one, we must have flipped this fraction 
to turn it into a multiplication equation, and then we would have gotten 8 over 15. I'm not going to flip 8 over 15 and turn it to 15 over 8 because we don't flip the answer. We just flip this question, the second fraction here. So if we did that, we must have multiplied by 4, and on the bottom, 3. 5 times 3, 2 times 4. Great. But that's only after we flipped it. In the original question, it was pre-flipped. Right. We, did, we didn't flip it yet. So it doesn't look like 4 thirds. It would have looked like 3 fourths. Test it out. Times, flip, bang. You got 8 over 15. Now, having said that, you will know if you learned exactly what I just said now. You will know that you get it if you can do this. Go ahead and pause the video if you'd like. I'm going to move on and do it. 4 times 3 is 12. Plus 3 is 15. 15 over what? Yes, 15 over 4. Okay, now let's do this here. The first fraction is not flipped. It's just regular. The second fraction is flipped. It becomes 4 over 15. And then we get 8 over 30. Okay, we don't flip the answer. We just flip that second one. Great. What was that first fraction? 2 and 3. 2 times 4 is 8, right? And what else? Yes, 2. Oh, no, what happened here? 2 and 2, we've never seen that before. That's just a whole. That's just one whole. Because you know what? 4 over 15 is 8 over 30. It's the exact same thing, right? You double the 8, you double the 15, you get this. So 4 over 15 and 8 over 30 are equivalent fractions, which means we must have multiplied by 1 to make this true. Very good. Now, my answer here would have been just one whole. One whole divided by this equals that. 